Africans are now scared of Africa. How huh. can you be scared of your mother? Africans <laughs> are scared of Africa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that... Um... Well, hello, 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 my Tembas Temptu Roots, where we plan on talking our way to a plan. Today, we have a special brother of mine who actually here at Temptu Roots, we are doing it differently today. We are actually talking to somebody who conquered the West and is back home in Africa for choices that he made, and he will share with us why. Roland, please introduce yourself to my people. Tell them who you are, where you're from, what you do, whatever you're willing to share at this point, because they'll get to know you more as we speak. Please, the floor is yours. Hey, Mike, hey, thank you for having me, man. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Oh, and yeah. uh, I guess this chat is going to be different, man. Mm -hmm. A little bit different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, uh, my name is Roland, Roland Akinonde. Um, I'm from the Republic of Congo, yes. a.k.a. Congo Brazzaville. Congo Brazzaville. Uh, 40 years old, five kids, uh, Donna, Cindy, <laughs> Fis, Mwini, and Uche, the last one. That's five kids. Wait, did you say uh, the last one? Yes, that's the last one. It's it's the last one. Five is enough. <laughs> and you heard the name Uche. Uche. Oh. Yeah, boy. So um, I see. So uh, yeah, I'm um, I'm a financial uh, uh, analyst. That's what I do for a living. But um, uh, in in. in I'm, I'm just a guy who uh, likes to uh, touch everything, you know, a little bit of a mechanic, of a carpenter, of a welder. Uh, so that's what I, I do um, as a hobby at home. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, you and I met in Senegal. We did. Okay, around um, 2001. Mm -hmm. um, so I did a little bit of my high school here in Brazzaville. And then uh, moved um, to Senegal, where I finished high school in 2001. And then we met in 2001 uh, Suffolk University, Dakar yes. campus. Yes. Um, finished with my uh, associate degree in finance in uh, the Dakar campus, 2004, I believe it was. Uh, then moved three. to the US. Yeah. 2000. Yeah. Well, it was three for you, four for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and then um, moved uh, to the U.S. Uh, not in Boston, but in Magnolia. Uh, Magnolia mm -hmm. is in Arkansas. It's a small town in Arkansas, mm -hmm. about twenty minutes away from uh, Little Rock, about an hour mm -hmm. away from Little Rock. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I did uh, my bachelor's degree in finance. Then I moved to Boston, uh, worked a little bit, and I went to Endicott College for. Uh, an MBA in corporate finance. Mm -hmm. And uh, right after I graduated from my MBA, um, I decided to move back. Like, uh, what, two weeks later? <laughs> move back uh, to the motherland. To the motherland. So you, you, first, we'll get there. Let me go all the way back to your intro, okay. where you're from. Bro. Okay. Uh, I need a, a, a lesson here, education here. A okay. lot of my listeners would know this. You said you are from the Republic of Congo, not to yes. be confused with the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes. I, I find that side of Africa or, or that side of our, our continent interesting and fascinating the, the, the two congos give us a little lesson there especially your great cities of brazzaville and kinshasa, and kinshasa you know, yeah. sitting sitting on that congo river it's beautiful tell us a little bit about those two countries and how how much uh, uh, you have to differentiate between the two when you travel mm -hmm. where you're from and you have to clarify yeah well um you know the 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 congos um 
Well, it's written C O N G O, but back in the days, it's it was actually K O N G O. Okay, so it was a it was a kingdom, it was mm. a kingdom called Congo, that was mm. covering uh, that whole area, just like uh, in West Africa, where today you see, uh, 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 Bamile, uh, I mean, uh, let's say, uh, what what ethnic do we have there, like uh, Mandingo? Right. Yes. Yes. You, yes. You, you 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 find some in Gambia. You find some yes. in, in Senegal. Right. Yes. You find uh, like in them Mali. Ser- yeah. in Mali. Mm. Them. Uh, mm. Yeah. You see them uh, one side. Uh, them Bambaras. Mm. You see them one side, and yes. you see them yes. the other side too. Right. Right. Um, right. So it's it's the same thing here. Uh, it's the same people, and then at the Berlin conference when um, yes. them. Um, uh they decided to divide Europe, africa yes. split yes so uh what they used as a physical uh border is the river okay so these people these congo people they were on both sides of the river so when you divide you use the river to divide uh that's what created the two congos so french um uh, uh france took one side of uh, of uh, the river, which is uh, the west side, Brazzaville, yes. and yes. Uh, 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 Belgium took the right side uh, of the river uh, on the east side, Kinshasa. Uh, mm-hmm. Kinshasa. Mm-hmm. So um, French people and Belgian people having different cultures, they yes. managed their colonies with mm-hmm. their culture right uh, mm-hmm. with their own mm-hmm. management style mm-hmm. or whatever you would call it um so differences uh, started to appear in the local culture too but the language stayed the same uh, but some things um became different yes. uh but um really it's it's the same people the we same all people. speak lingala Mm-hmm. When you go uh, uh, deeper into uh, like very local languages, there are very yes. local languages that yes. are shared. Yes. When you go along the Congo River, mm-hmm. you meet um, different ethnic groups and uh, you see them speak uh, the same language on both sides of the river. Yes. So um, that's actually the story of uh, the two uh, countries now. Um, you need to know that they are the closest uh, uh, main capital of uh, countries. Yes. So there are no Kinshasa, two Kinshasa cities, yes. yes, capitals that are that close. It's, uh, I think, uh, 10 to 12 kilometers. Uh, so it's a boat ride, about a 10, 12 minutes boat ride. Seeing, seeing the cities seeing each other across the river. Exactly. I, I find that fascinating. It's, it's just amazing. And I and I bring that up so that anybody that is interested will will take a look. It's just it's just just seeing that. Just just the sight, even on the map, is it's it's fascinating. Uh, yeah. uh, before we move on, I, I just um I want to know a little bit more about your side of the Congo, the uh, the Brazzaville side. If there's anybody listening right now, because you right now you're Africa's ambassador, my brother, so you you are. <laughs> uh, uh, if anybody listening right now is interested, just from your from our intro and wants to uh, visit the Republic yeah. of Congo, which yeah. is the Brazzaville side, yes. and they want to visit, what would you say to them? Well. Uh... You know there there are things to uh, to look at here. You know it's uh, it's it's Africa, it's mm-hmm. uh, 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 it's different from visiting uh, Brazil or visiting China. You know you're going okay. to uh, uh, come a- a- and see uh, one <clears throat> side of Africa because you know many people think Africa is just one whole place that looks the same everywhere. You know. Um, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Africa is the biggest continent, if I'm not of mistaken. Of course, it is. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, in land, uh, in, in, in land so, mass and everything, yes. So, so why would the Russian culture <clears throat> be different from uh, French culture? And someone would think that, uh, you know, everywhere in Africa, is it's one culture. It's you know? so, mm-hmm. so you come to Congo Brazzaville, there are a lot of uh, things to do, sightseeing, 
uh, the food, you know, you, you will enjoy some different type of food, uh, uh, the people to interact with, the art, you will see different type of art. Uh, mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things to do. Uh, so if you want a different experience mm -hmm. uh, from what you've had in West Africa, East Africa, South Africa, North Africa, or, yes. or different from your experience in Europe, you can consider uh, uh, Congo Brazzaville. You know? And go see. Yeah. And go see. Yeah, definitely. It, definitely. Here you are. I, I mean, it, Congo is home to you and it attracted you back, right? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. For Congo to attract you after you had a taste of the West. You lived yeah. in the U.S. You lived in, uh, uh, um, you lived in different areas of the U.S., you know, uh, mm -hmm. um, And yet you made the choice to go back, like you said, two weeks after you got your master's, you know, uh, yes. uh, in corporate finance. That alone, I am super interested in. What pulled you back to Congo after you had a taste of the West? And not only that, if you so choose right now, as we speak, you can pick a country and you live there. Why? Because of uh, uh, your background, your education, and you know just the type of person you are. Any country will look at your resume and know you can contribute to their economy. So why did you choose to go back home? And Mike, that's a that's a big question. You know, we can stay right. like 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 three hours, but I'm gonna I'm gonna make it short. Now there yes. are um, reasons that I call. Um, that I thought were um, objective. Like, okay. um, you know, um, six months before I graduated, I had a, um, I graduated with my MBA in um, 2011. Yes. Um, getting a job, <clears throat> a corporate job in the US at that time was very difficult. If, um, uh, if uh, anybody can remember. Uh, mm -hmm. 2011 was very yes. tough uh, economic crisis following up the, uh, the, the 2008, 2008 crash, yeah. crash mm -hmm. you know it mm -hmm. was very tough mm -hmm. uh, so I had a lot of friends uh, Americans white with blue eyes who graduated with uh, the same degree like uh, 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 maybe it was six months before yes and uh, they still couldn't get a job you mm -hmm. know they still couldn't get a job mm -hmm. uh, so I thought you know uh, I, I, I think I have a little competitive advantage uh, compared to the job market back home yes you know uh, we are uh, the Republic of Congo is a French speaking country it is so the first advantage I had was uh, uh, that I could speak English mm -hmm. okay uh, and um, the Second advantage, uh, competitive advantage I, I, I thought I had was um, having studied in uh, the U.S. Because uh, mostly uh, uh, people here, when they go abroad, they go study in France. So, um, uh, 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 you know, compared to like Cameroon, where you have uh, a lot of people are Anglophones too, Okay, uh, 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 Congo is not like that, you know. It's we don't. It's not many people that can speak English. So I thought um, I, I had a, a, a more chances of landing uh, a, a good job, big uh, job, a, 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 a good big job. And um, when I came uh, home, um, uh, it took uh, about uh, two weeks to less than a month. In less than a month, I was uh, I got a job in a brewery. Uh, mm -hmm. Taking yes, care of uh, their, their their logistics, yes, uh, everything that was logistics in the the, the only brewery uh, that the Republic of Congo had at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's the job I got. So those were the the what, what I call the objective reasons, yes. kind of like yes. the scientific yes. Yes. Uh, yes. reasons. Yes. I, I have yes. um, other ones too, but I'll, I'll keep it there. The oh. subjective ones were. Mm -hmm. uh, You know, it had been um, seven to eight years that I hadn't seen any member of my family. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm the eldest of, uh, of many, many, you know, uh, about uh, 80 brothers. And when I mean brothers, in the African way, you know, your, 
the kids, your, your, cousins, your parents, yes. siblings. Yes. Okay, what what they yes. call cousins, we yes. call it brother. So, um, so uh, uh, you know, I missed everybody. You know, uncles, aunties, my parents, my my brothers, and and uh, you get news that they are not doing well, that they are being bad boys, that they are not doing well in school. Uh, I thought they needed a role model. They needed someone to look up mm. to. Um, mm. I knew I was already in that position where they were looking up to me, but I mm -hmm. thought, you know, if I if I'm there, they will uh, in person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it will be better. So I missed everyone. I missed my family. Um, so uh, I decided, hey, you know, it's uh, when I mixed all these reasons. Uh, yes, I thought it's time to go. Um, now, not everyone agreed. Uh, my parents didn't want. Uh, I have a lot of friends, uh, uh, including you, asking me, but why, why, why? What are, we do what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, you know? Uh, so it's, uh, it's uh, what, what some is called, some, what some called uh, risk that I, yes. I took. So, uh, yes. you, know, uh, you know, big move for, for big boys. The objective <laughs> reasons you, you, you took, it just makes so much sense. Like, it makes a lot of sense competitive advantage, giving yourself the edge. Uh, uh, you did that, you proved it. Um, um, I'm curious to know, just generally, it doesn't have to be a specific person. Why do you think, from friends here to family at home, what do you think are the reasons why everybody was like, eh, what are you doing? You know, what do you think are those reasons? Uh you know, a, a, a lot. They, it's it's a lot of aspects. You have a uh, social aspects, okay? okay, where people will say, "Well, you know, uh, uh, living in Africa uh, can be can be tough. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, electricity that can be, uh, you know, and have problems. Water problems." Uh, so that's social aspect. Uh, mm -hmm. You also have. Uh, you may have uh, also. Um, medical aspects you know hospitals who are you gonna how are you gonna take care of your health uh, um, and you also have economic problems where you people may think well you know the, the economy is not too good over there jobs are scarce uh, people may think corruption um, but in my opinion people are just victims of uh, how we are um uh, 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 in the media, in the U.S. and in the yes. Western world, how things are just vilified, po uh, they are portrayed in a in a in a, in a bad way. Uh, so uh, it scares people, and it it, it it gets to a point where Africans are now scared of Africa. How huh. can you be scared of your mother? Africans <laughs> are scared of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that Africans weird? are scared of Africa. That's that's yeah. um, uh, here at Temple Roots, and you've you've been you've been a, a, a supporter of of the conversations we are having here. You've heard over and over and over where people express these things that you just mentioned, where yeah. the reasons why your friends and family were like, "What are you doing, dude? You know, you have access to the West. You're in America." Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. uh, no matter how hard it is to find a job now, which was around the 2011, it can, mm -hmm. uh, 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 here, Africa, can be better. Uh, uh, stay there, keep looking for a job, whatever. And the reasons you just listed, you know, some of which have nothing to do with the economic side, where it, it's actually today as we speak, are the same reasons that are being echoed here in our conversations, like people that are looking at their country in, in Africa and, and that alone being scary enough for them to hustle their way out of, you know, hardships here in the West, even though there are opportunities like that. And, and especially the edge that you just mentioned, there's a vast population of you know, uh, uh, Francophone speaking uh, uh, countries, you know, uh, people from Africa that are out in the West, studied English, they're bilingual, plenty of them here who can share this, that same edge, that same advantage, but they wouldn't look at it. It's too risky, too scary. Mm -hmm. Why is yeah, it risky? Yeah. Why is it scary? Those are the things you are listing out. What you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me, let me uh, talk about that. 
so yes. uh, yeah you would say well you, you, we have francophones africans that decided yes. not to go back yes. uh, apparently they have the same competitive advantage as you have in yes. congo yes. Uh, so they would have the same in mali or or, or or, or in Guinea or, or in Burkina, right? Burkina, Cote d'Ivoire, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, uh, the Republic of Congo is about 4.5 million people. Yes. Okay? So, it's, yes. It's, it's, it's it's not a lot of people. In comparison uh, compare, to... Us, yes. compare, compare to Kinshasa, uh, uh, to DRC, mm -hmm. which is 65 million. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, mm -hmm. and Brazzaville is about 1 million people, the city of Brazzaville. Mm -hmm. And the city of Kinshasa is about 12 million people. <gasps> yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. that was uh, uh, some brackets. So yes. uh, um, um, it's um, so out of uh, 4.5 million people, right? Yes. Yes. I had more chances. <laughs> yes. Okay? You're looking at the ratio uh, there. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, uh, the culture really in, uh, in, in, in Congo Brazzaville is to go to France. People uh, 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 really looked at English as a barrier. Uh, uh, our parents uh, were also scared of sending kids in, in the US because it's, yes. it's physically far away. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and I, I believe at some point we didn't have an embassy here at all. So it was too complicated. We had to go to Kinshasa. Okay. Right. So, um, uh, um, not many people have that uh, 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 U.S. culture, yes. uh, professional yes. culture in them, yes. right? Yes. But it's not the case in Mali or in Burkina. Population no, is Burkina. higher. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. The, the, the culture of sending kids to study in the U.S. or even yes. in London, yes. uh, it, it, it's, it's even more, right? Yes. So, yes. When, when they come back, uh, to to Mali, a yes. lot of Malians are in the U.S. studying in uh -huh. the U.S. There's yes. not a lot of Congolese. If yes. I ask you, uh -huh. except our brother, our Congolese brother that you know, Andy, yes. I'm yes. sure you don't know another one no. in the U.S. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Not, so, not so, that I can think of. Is there yeah. any that I know out there? Forgive me. I can only think of my two brothers here. So 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 uh, it's not it's not that many. So that's yes. kind of how I was thinking, you know. Um, but when a man goes did, yeah. back to Mali, yeah, yeah. Yes, I see what you did there. Uh, um, you you gave these, you know, uh, objective advantages and and the edge that you have, and for, further elaborating, you know, just tells every francophone out there studying english you know uh listen the numbers are not the same if, if you're senegalese and you're here in the u.s and you have uh, i don't care what degree you have right yes there's yes. Uh, there's 1700 of you that have that same degree you know with bilingual advantages and all of that uh, and you exactly go to Dakar, there's you know 17,000 more of you so so i see uh, exactly I see exactly what you're saying and you're being yeah. fair here you're being typical roller <laughs> Uh, but 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 generally just everything that you listed as far as just the continent as a whole you know uh just the uh, why people don't go home why people are afraid of going home you know there's reality there that we can't just gloss over and, and and pretend it doesn't exist um you went home even though you have all these advantages that made you go home and you proved yourself right tell me the challenges after give, having a taste of uh, the West and you went home, were there any challenges when you got back home? Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the main one is um, cultural. Hmm. Okay. The main one is cultural, uh, cultural in the family, mm -hmm. culture uh, at work. Okay. Professional culture. Mm. Um, the values are different. You know, uh, so uh, 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 for for example, um, you know, when in entrepreneurship, um, so I, I'm talking about Congo that I know. Yes. Yes. Um, of course. I, I've tried. I've tried a lot of things. Um, what 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 I've noticed is that, um, uh, like manpower, okay, human resources. Uh, when you are into entrepreneurship, 
is uh, to to find quality uh, human resources is 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 tough. It's tough because people don't have the same sense of integrity. People have the don't have the same uh, sense of um, of um, I would say um, uh, uh, hustle here. Okay. Uh, now, what, what what I'm trying to say is that when I um, first came, I it culturally I it was there was a lot of clash. Okay, mm. there was a lot of clash uh, at work, uh, but you just need to um, to adapt to that. Some of 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 the good uh, of African values that we have that I lost. Okay, because I went away. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, 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 when I came back, um, it was it was a clash with uh, with people. Okay, mm. uh, like a sense of uh, I would say the sense of time. Okay, uh, 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 is is different here than than over there in the U.S. But remember, yes, uh, we have that uh, common Egyptian. Uh, 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 professor that we had, uh, I think his name was Ma- Ma- Majid Mazad. Majid, Majid, like Majid, Majid. Yes, he yes, was yes, say- yes. He was saying there's no better culture. Culture is just different, right? And mm-hmm. he gave us a story mm-hmm. about when he went back to Egypt. Um, yes. He told us a story uh, mm-hmm. when he went back to Egypt and he met his friend. And his friend was like, uh, "You know, uh, let's meet." Uh, and he, he asked his friend, "Yeah, what time?" Yes. Uh, his friend told him when the sun comes down. Yes. Uh, uh, because he had been in, in the U.S. And he was like, yeah, yeah, but the sun goes down. But what time? Yeah. His friend was like, when the sun goes down. Yeah. He yeah. wanted to hear, you know, maybe 6 p.m. or 5 yes. p.m., you know. Yes. But, yes. but uh, uh, so you see, that's a, a, a different um, sense or a different uh, uh, culture relating to time. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Both yeah. of them, he was saying that both of mm-hmm. them clashed because mm-hmm. uh, the cultures were different. He had lost that Egyptian uh, yes. way of, of yes. looking at time. Okay. Yes. So yes. Um, a lot of uh, uh, similar problems I, I, yes. I had when 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 wow. I when I got here. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So he, those uh, were the uh, first challenges. I, I see. I see. I see what you're talking about. Uh, and and as you were talking about that story. Uh, I'm thinking about just us Africans and just how we grew up, what is accepted around us, you know, is what actually culture is. It's, it's, it's what is formed, it's what is acceptable by the masses. And so you're able to okay. live through it. And knowing you and going back home, you, you, you're you one not to back down and you're one not to <laughs> hold back <laughs> on what yeah. you think. I can only yeah, imagine... Yeah, yeah. Those clashes, because you're not, yeah. you know, you're not uh, age back home like seniority by age. It, it's a mm-hmm. it's a big thing where it's you know for thing, you yeah. when it comes to just stating facts, you know, it doesn't matter who is across from you. And I can only imagine what you went through. <laughs> in <the laughs> yeah, many, and, many, and, many problems, uh, especially at work with with this age thing you're talking about. Yeah, with this age, thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we have a friend in common, Caddy, that mentioned uh, um, what her hesitation was in going back to work in Burkina uh, because she got it to a level as a woman. She got to a level where she knew she'll go and have to clash clash with not only sexism but ageism too. And that mm-hmm. was, you know, she doesn't hold back when it comes to just how things should be done as far as work is concerned. And that was mm-hmm. a big part of her saying, you know, I can't go and change all of that. I yeah, might as yeah. well stay away. Uh, mm-hmm. um, it, 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 I wanted to share a story it, it, uh, about just the cultural norms that I had to adjust to. When I just got here, talk about time. When I just got yeah. here in the U.S., here I was in Boston, and the very first month, I was supposed to see Emily. We share a friend yeah. in common, Emily. Yeah. American. Emily Gabriel, yeah. Yes, who we met in, in Dakar for three months, and she came back to the U.S. I was supposed to meet her again for the first time, and we were supposed to meet at Park Street, my very first month. And 
when I was getting ready to, to, to go meet her, it started raining heavily. It was raining heavily. <laughs> and you stayed I home. Just, I just took off my clothes and sat, started, continued watching TV. Didn't call her, didn't communicate. I just yeah, sat yeah. and watched TV. Yeah. When she got there, the time we were supposed to meet, I think it was 6 or 6.30, I, don't, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I think she waited a little bit. Maybe she thought it was the train. Didn't see me for close to a half hour. And then called me. Uh, Mike, where are you? I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm home. Where are you? <laughs> right? She was so confused like, by how casual I was with saying, oh, yes, I'm at home. Yes, right? yes. She was so confused. Mm -hmm. And she told me, I'm here where we were supposed to meet in Park Street. Then I became so confused by why <laughs> it's raining heavily and she showed up. Yeah, 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 yeah. She could not understand why rain will make me stay home. Yeah. And I could not understand why heavy rain will make her, <laughs> she will get out Mike, and me, get into the heavy rain. Mike, let me say something uh, yes. regarding that. You know, it's not your fault. Because uh, the uh, 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 city's infrastructure, okay, yes. are different in Boston than in Brazzaville and Banjo, okay? Uh, I've seen rain in the U.S., but rain yes. in, in Africa or in Congo Yes. It's it's really brutal, okay? Uh, uh, but it can be brutal in the U.S. too, I, I guess. The yeah. U.S. is big. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but the consequences of rain of on the rain. roads, of yes. heavy rain on the roads, and um, on, on the environment that uh, uh, you're living from to go where you, you're going to, right? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, it can be a problem, you know? Uh, cities shut down in Africa when it rains. You know the the bus, uh, the buses will go on the side and park and wait for the rain to 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 stop. Okay, so so uh, there is no point uh, getting out uh, or, or, or at least some cities in Africa. Yes, okay, yes, yes. Uh, uh, there is no point getting out in the rain, uh, even if you 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 are willing to go to where you're going to but you stand there you have no bus you have no so you just you just stay home right so you left from dakar or banjo to the, yeah. to a city that yeah. is uh, organized uh, an old city they, they've had time to to adjust to all of that I, i'm sure yes. at one point boston was a city where when it rains you can't get out you know My at boy. one point you know so so it's not it's not it's not your fault it's, that's it's, really good that's really yeah. good i didn't yeah. look at it from that angle i just look at the yeah. cultural aspect hey this is what we do but i didn't look at how infrastructure can influence that culture where you know yeah. like you said uh, uh banjul and my banjul thing and where i'm from there's no drainage system infrastructure wise where it rains water goes underground and you're not seeing it kind of like take your whole street with it and, <laughs> and, and so, with it and with houses with it and so we all know that now it's raining let's stay home let's let's convene after the rain but yes. over here when they have that level of infrastructure you're able to go about your business with an umbrella or a raincoat and business continues that exactly. is a massive topic as far as you know uh keeping us behind because if if we get to africa as a whole if mm -hmm. we get to a place where you know, uh, things like that don't, don't stop that economic clock. That yeah. alone can be an advantage. I, my boy, I can, we've gone past the half hour mark and I need to take my breather. You know, I cannot go without, you know, tell me something I don't know. So, <laughs> so yeah. let's take a woosa. Mm -hmm. You know so much that I'm sure I'm not, I, I don't even think about. So just pick one from your arsenal, right? Is there anything that you think I don't know? And I'm here to admit to anything I don't know that you mentioned. Is there anything? It can be anything. Please share. 